what is it about going to a grocery store um, that apparently causes people to lose all sense of uh, situational awareness? Now, first of all, I do not get an intrinsic thrill from going to the grocery store. My goal is to get in there, get what I need, and get out of there. I'm not shopping. I'm hunting. <laughs> That's why I make a list, and my goal is to get the stuff off the list and into the grocery cart. But apparently... Uh, some people consider a trip to the grocery store uh, some sort of a relaxing and recreational experience or something akin to you know yoga um, they seem to want to savor you know the experience you know well my actually my frustration begins before i even enter the store uh, when i'm in the parking lot it seems like the guy in front of me wants that parking spot that's right there by the front door of the grocery store and he's very patient and willing to wait and burn a gallon of gas idling his car, waiting on uh, the person to unload their groceries into their car and then get in their car, crank their car up, put it in reverse, and drive off. And um, Now, if the guy in front of me wants to waste his gas and his time, um, that's one thing. But he's also wasting mine. You know, in the time he has spent idling his vehicle, I could have gone around him if he would have allowed it and parked and been in the in the store. But anyway, well, finally, I, I get inside and it have you ever noticed it seems like people are just kind of strolling their carts down the aisle slowly. Yeah, I don't mind if they want to go slow. What I do mind is that they are smack dab in the middle of the aisle where I can't get around them. Uh, any fear, if I interfere and do something like say, well, excuse me, please, you know, it seems like somehow I'm the one that's being rude. Well, you know, they finally stop and they, they, they're taking a look at some canned peas. You know, and now they park their buggy right in the middle of the aisle and... Um, they're examining the peas, looking at the labels and uh, of the identical peas. That's right, folks. They're all the same. They harvest the peas from the field. They take them to the plant. The plant puts them in a can, and they put wrappers on it from all the different grocery stores and loaded them up into the various trucks. It's the same thing. They're peas. Well, I kind of figure I might as well get some green beans. I don't need them, but I can keep them in the pantry. But I'm trying to help the person. So I kind of reach in front of them and, you know, grab a, a can of green beans and put them in my cart. You know, I'm trying to show them that you can do this in less than two seconds. But now they notice me and they say, oh, am I in your way? But they, they act like I've been rude reaching around them because they were kind of blocking the entire aisle. So <laughs> just trying to help. Well, I finally make it to the next aisle, and it, it seems that a couple of long-lost friends have encountered one another, and they're really catching up on, um, well, gossip. You know, the, the cousin who had an affair, the promiscuous preacher's daughter, and all kinds of daytime soap opera drama. Yeah, I, I really don't want to listen to that, but I don't have much choice. Uh, their carts are, of course, side by side, and uh, I can't get by. Uh, well, I don't want to be rude and interrupt their conversation, but after a while of just hanging out, you know, I'll say, <clears throat> you know, do something to get their attention. And, and then they look up in astonishment like, oh, there's other people in the store. I thought we had the whole place to ourselves." <laughs> um, and I just kind of ease by and, you know, I wonder if they... Th consider how long I've been eavesdropping on their conversation, and I guess if they did, I would have been rude uh, for eavesdropping. <laughs> well, finally, I'm in the clear, and I get in an aisle, and man, I'm zipping up one aisle and, and down the other, and I'm headed for the checkout, okay? Um, now, um, folks, don't ever get behind me in a checkout line, because you see, I have line jinx. Uh, in other words, whatever line I get in seems to come to a utter and complete standstill. <laughs> um, I, I've only got a few items, so I go to that express checkout lane. 
Um, and it seems like invariably uh, people haven't read the sign that says 10 items or less, you know, and they're unloading their items or, or, well, at least they're trying to, but they've got these kids they are trying to herd like cats and the kids want candy and they're screaming and mommy and, you know, mommy has to explain to them that the candy's not good for them. And after a long protracted discussion, the mom realizes it's futile and she just gets the candy. You know, well, meanwhile, their ice cream has melted, but, you know, at least they've got candy that they can eat. Um, and um, so, you know, bleep, 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 you know, I can hear them scanning the items and I'm counting. You know, one, two, three, four, five. And then the clerk realizes, oh, ma'am, did you realize that this is a buy one, get one item? You can get a free one. <laughs> so... Oh, yeah, they want their free one. So the clerk gets on the phone, a little intercom thingy, you know, blah, 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 please, you know. And, and then they continue the checkout. Bleep, bleep, bleep. And I'm counting 10, 11, 12, 13. And gosh, sometimes they get as many as 20 items in the express lane of 10 items or less. Um, and then the clerk tells them the total. And to their astonishment, they realize, oh, heck, I need to get my wallet out of my purse. And, and then she'll go fumbling through her purse. And meanwhile, she finds a handful of coupons and hands those over to the clerk. And the clerk's sitting there going through them one by one and trying to find one that hadn't expired. You know? and, uh, and they finally get one. And, um, so then they... Um, finally get a coupon and I've made it through the express checkout lane. I'm sorry, I can't seem to find my purse. I must have 10 of them. Can you just ring mine first, please? There's someone ahead of you, sir. I usually keep my change in my little change bear, but... That's almost <laughs> interesting. How much is hers? 526. You just add it on, please. Hold on, hold on. If, it, if it's not in this one, it'll be in another one. That'll be 965. Thank you very much. How sweet! You didn't have to do that for me. I didn't do it for you. Check some bags next time. Now, my day's kind of been trashed at this point, <laughs> so so I try to salvage uh, something out of my day and have a little fun. So on the way out, I stop by customer service and say, uh, "This bread that I've purchased here uh, is is stale and it may even be molded." You know, and they're very professional and very courteous. And they look at it and they say, well, I just don't know how that could have happened. We always put our bread out fresh daily. And I explain to them, I say, well, yeah, it was fresh when I got it. But in the experience of navigating through the aisles and going through your checkout lane, the bread has become stale and moldy. So they kind of get a chuckle. <laughs> Sometimes I like to stop by the pharmacy and, and you know, and say, can I help you, sir? Well, um, I'm concerned about my blood pressure. I, I may have high blood pressure, and I'm wondering what I should do about that. And they say, well, how do you know you, you know, have high blood pressure? I say, well, because I've just spent half a day in your parking lot and in your aisles and in your express checkout lane, and I'm about to burst. And uh, they kind of get a chuckle out of it. So, um so finally, I kind of head outside, and now it's time for me to get my revenge on those idiots that burn a gallon of gas waiting on a parking place close to the front door. So I kind of stroll to the car, to the first car lined up there, and I jingle my keys, and sure enough, a driver takes the bait and comes to a complete standstill. And they idle and they idle and I sit there and I fumble with my keys and and, 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 uh, and then I walk away from the car. And the driver is just terribly upset, drives by, you know, steps on the gas and gives me one of the fingers, you know. And, uh, you know, well, that idiot should have known that wasn't my car. <laughs> well, 
<laughs> obviously some of this has been hyperbole, but you know these kind of things uh, do seem to happen with regularity, and I hope uh, that it's given you a chuckle, enlightened your day up a little bit. But I do have a point. Aren't we that way in church sometime? As we're busy fellowshipping with one another and praising and singing and smiling and all that, um, we need to keep our radar up. I think we need to be sensitive uh, to those who are there, perhaps alone, off to themselves, quiet. If there's a visitor, let's not assume that they're there because their car broke down in the parking lot and they just were kind of wandering around and found themselves in church. No, I think that these people are coming to church because they're hurting. They have a deep spiritual need. Something may have happened in their life, and maybe for the first time, they're looking to God, and they go to church. Let's make sure that we show them the compassion that Christ showed. They need love. We all do. It's an opportunity to show them the love of Christ. Let's not blow it. After all, if we don't show them the love they need, they will continue their search. Uh, they may go to the country club, the bar, somewhere. Well, that's what I've been thinking about today. Um, you ever have thoughts like that? Well, <laughs> even if you haven't, um, I would really welcome you or invite you uh, to share some comments on the space provided on this page. And uh, hey, connect. let's connect on Twitter. Uh, my Twitter handle is on the screen below. Uh, I also maintain a text version of this uh, blog. It serves as my notes to do these videos. I love doing these videos. Um, and actually, I'm not the only one that does them. There's a team of us Christian uh, men and women who use our blogs or whatever, um, and we share them here with you in hopes that they will um, encourage you, in hopes that they will lighten your load a little bit, maybe bring a smile to your face. Um, if you enjoyed this video, uh, or even if you didn't, there are others. If you'll subscribe to this YouTube channel, check the other ones out. And uh, we'd invite you to subscribe to this YouTube channel. 